Hi, so today I wanted to talk about yogurt. This is a question that I get somewhat frequently, especially in private messages from people kind of wondering what to choose. So I went out today and bought some. Now this is by no means what you need to buy or all that's available. I just chose some brands that I know I personally like um, and that I think are pretty good brands as well. Are they perfect? No, uh, but I wanted to kind of just give you an idea of, of what's out there. So I'm gonna kind of start with the foundation of my yogurt consumption and that is the Stonyfield Organic. As you can see, it's a whole milk based. So there's some debate um, between dietitians, nutritionists, uh, surgeons, the whole medical field in general as to whether you should have low fat dairy products, no fat dairy products, full fat dairy products. And what I've determined from the research that I've seen and just what I've personally experienced, I tend to like the whole fat yogurt especially. Now milk, um, you know, maybe a 2% is a good choice, uh, but I really like the whole fat yogurt. I think it has a good taste, a good consistency, and it leaves me feeling more satisfied. I'm not craving things and, and wanting to snack more later on. Now I know most of our handouts say non-fat yogurt or low-fat yogurt, and we just really haven't changed that yet because this is the kind of the frustrating thing with nutrition is that it's constantly changing and more research is being done, which is exciting. But when it comes to making recommendations to patients, it can get difficult because there's not a concrete yes or no or right or wrong answer on things. So that's just kind of personally how I feel. You can sort of pick and choose what you want to do. Um, as far as like the pre-op goes, if you're on like a liver shrink diet, you might want to go with the fat-free or the lower fat version just because our goal there is to shrink your liver and not for weight loss. So just my two cents weighing in on that. So we use this. Um, it's the yogurt that my daughter eats every morning. It's what I use in our smoothies. I like to mix this with some flavored yogurts like the Venosa um, just to kind of cut down on, on the sweetness. Uh, and it's just so creamy that I really like it. So let's look at the label. As you can see, a serving's one cup. So for most of you, that's gonna be way too much. You're gonna be doing a half of a cup to maybe two ounces, kind of depending. It is significant in the grams of fat, as you can see there, saturated fat, five grams. But once again, most of you are not gonna be eating that much. Um, and as I said before, the research is kind of changing as far as, um, you know, maybe is, you know, fat-free, not as good as what you once thought it was. And then our protein, eight grams. So that's not gonna be as high as a Greek yogurt, but it's probably gonna be higher than a lot of other flavored yogurts. And then the other number that I want you to pay close attention to is that sugar, so 11 grams. And if we go to our ingredients over here, it's cultured pasteurized organic whole milk, pectin, and D3, and then it has the cultures. So you can see there's no added sugars. So that 11 grams of sugar is coming from lactose, which is the natural milk sugar that is found in milk. So you're not going to uh, find a lot of yogurts that take that lactose out. Now one of the yogurts we'll talk about here in a second, they actually do remove, or I'm pretty sure they remove the lactose. A lot of lactose-free yogurts, obviously you're gonna have that lactose removed, so you're gonna see the grams of sugar being much less. I am not concerned about your grams of lactose. Now, if you have a lactose intolerance, then yes, I am concerned. But this 11 grams, I am not concerned. You will likely not get dumping from it unless you're you know, drinking a lot of water with this yogurt. So it's the added sugars that we really wanna pay attention to. So there's that. I'm probably gonna to have to do this post in a couple different settings because I think this is gonna be long. Um, but here's another one. So this is actually a Greek yogurt. I could not find a plain version. Uh, but we'll kind of go through this. So this serving is 5.3 ounces. Calories 180. Um, 11 grams of protein, as you can see there. So a smaller serving, but more grams of protein. And that's because with Greek yogurt, they actually strain more of the liquid out. And so it's just a more concentrated product. You could essentially take any of these yogurts and sift them through some cheesecloth for an hour or so and let the the water kind of strain out and you would essentially make your own Greek yogurt. So there's a little trick of the trade. 
Um, and then if you look at our ingredients, again, pasteurized organic whole milk, organic cane sugar. So that is where, when we look at our sugar grams, <clears throat> that 18. So part of that 18 is going to be the lactose, and part of that 18 is going to be that added cane sugar. Okay, it's not a ton. I'm not overly concerned about that, um, but it is there, just so you know. So there's that. The other one I'm going to go to next is Smari, I think. I'm not really sure how to pronounce this one. So this is a five ounce yogurt. And then if you go to our back here, 130 calories, so less calories, same kind of fat, significant portion of fat, only three grams of sugar, which makes me think that this one is low in lactose. No, it doesn't say, and I went to their website to try to do a little bit of quick research and I couldn't find anything that says they take out the lactose, but my guess is that that's what's going on there. And then a higher protein content. That also could be from the type of cows that they use. Uh, we're not really sure in this situation. And then as you can see here, no added uh, sugars. And then in this one, they actually use pasteurized skim milk. So, and then they add some whole milk as well, it looks like. So, that is the plain version. And then this one is a flavored. So it's a coconut, 0% milk fat, whereas this one says whole milk. So once again, I'm not usually a big fan of the 0%, but that's the only flavored one of this I could find. And then as you can see here, that organic cane sugar is the, looks like the third ingredient, <clears throat> which is pretty common and it has 11 grams of sugar. So once again, uh, some of those grams of sugar are gonna be from the lactose, but a significant portion of them in this case, it looks like are going to be from that added sugar. There's that. Uh, so I've grabbed a coconut yogurt or, as well, just to kind of show you, um, if some of you have a lactose intolerance, this can be a good option. The only problem with a lot of coconut yogurt or other products um, that are dairy-free is that they are very low in protein, so less than one gram. So you might get the flavor. It might be something good to add to your smoothies with protein powder just to get the nice smooth consistency or if you like that yogurt taste but can't do milk, this is a good option, but it's not going to give you the, the protein that you need, especially post-op initially. And as you can see, there's typically a lot more ingredients in these just to kind of keep them stable. Another brand that I really like the flavor of, um, but can be pretty high in calorie is this, this Nosa. It's eight ounces, almost 300 calories, so it's pretty significant. Um, 13 grams of protein, so a little bit higher. But then if you look at that sugar, it's this one's 28 grams. Um, most of these kind of range around the mid 20s to high 20s. And again, you can see that cane sugar is in there. So just to kind of give you guys some education, I hope this helps. I know this is kind of a long post, but just some things to look for when you are yogurt shopping. Got questions? We would love to hear from you in the comment section below. Tell us what else you want us to cover. And do not forget to share and like this video.